ओंकारायण <coughs> नम समय साराय स्वानुभूतिया चिकाशतेवायर्वभावाचिदे अज्ञान ज्ञान अंजल शलाखया चक्षुर मिलत तस्म श्रीगुरु नम तीर्थंको जगत न जयवंत वर्त ओंकार नाद जिन नो जयवंत वर्त जिन न समो शरण सौ जयवंत वर्त ने तीर्थ चार जग मा जयवंत वर्त नमो ए तीर्थ नायक ने नमो ओंकार नाद ने ओंकार संगरते नमो ते श्री कुंद कुंद ने अहो उपकार जिन वर नो कुंद नो ध्वनि देव नो जीन कुंद ध्वनि अहो ते गुरु कान नो अहो ते भगवती मात नो ध्रुव अचल ने अनुपम गति पामेल सर्वे श्री धन मंदी कहू सुत केवल भाषित आसमय प्रावृत अरे हूँ एक सुध सदा अरूपी ज्ञान दर्शन मय खरे कई अन्य ते मारु जरी परमाणु मात्र नरे जम नेत्र तेमज ज्ञान नारक नी वेद कर जाने ज कर मोदय निरज राबंद तेमज मोक्ष ने ओम नम सिद्धिव्य ओम नम सिद्धिव्य ओम शुद्धात्मा ने नम सो वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट स्टैंडर्ड नंबर फोर इन वट स्टैंडर्ड नंबर फोर basically what 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 does it say from stanza number 1 onwards if we talk about it the very first stanza uh, kunkun swami 2000 years back he says that uh, he establishes liberated soul in the heart that means he say that the i and liberated soul are one entity only that means my even though i am with the body and everything and liberated souls are free souls but that is my aim so indirectly he tells that i am going to make myself into everybody as a liberated soul <clears throat> gurudev kanji swami when he got this samesar on his hand then he said my god this is the scripture which is going to help me to get liberated a a a sharirit thavanu shastra che that means he said that uh, i am really impressed and this is the core philosophy which if i understand it correctly then i will go i will obtain liberation so this is what the first stanza says as soon as he finishes first stanza right away he hits very hard on the next stanza second stanza and says the two types of soul the transmigratory soul and transmigratory soul who are having attention focused on outside material thing constantly and there are souls who have visualized their inner self so he distinguishes two different types of souls right away in the second stanza and he says i don't have any relationship i have to cut down those kind of thing in which i have attention drawn to the outside material things so ultimately 
he suggests that uh, we all have to look within. When we look within, then we experience the true nature of the soul, and that is called right faith, samyak darshan. So right away in second stanza, he defines what is the nature of samyak darshan, which ultimately leads to purification and liberation. Then third stanza, he says <clears throat> that, uh, you know, I get involved with the outside material thing, and that is not the right thing for me. I have to try to go within. So that's the third stanza. And in fourth stanza, he said that, uh, why do I go and get engrossed in the material things on the outside world? That is what we are discussing. That he gives different reasons and all those things that we are discussing for last three, three to four weeks, that uh, why? Why am I drawn to the material objects? Why my attention gets drawn to the outside material things? And he describes those things. And also in this one, he very intelligently puts the five paravartan, five cycle of, uh, five cycle of time. In the sense, cycle of matter, I mean, cycle of matter, cycle of space, cycle of uh, uh, thought process, cycle of uh, um, incarnation, those kind of five things that he's talking about. And we talked four things last time. We'll just quickly summarize those things and then we come to the fifth one because I know Priti told me to go a little bit more detail on the fifth one. So we'll try to go that one. So let's see, where is this one? Uh, <clears throat> okay, so first one is cycle of a matter, means dravya paravartan. Means what happens that at a given time, when my soul takes a birth, whatever place, let's make that one as a point A. And at that time, I had certain inclination within me, and those inclination had certain intensity of those inclinations also were there. For example, at that time of my birth, maybe I was having anger. And that anger was extremely intense or it was extremely mild. So whatever that inclination was there, that particular inclination of the soul, and at the same time, Come into certain material karma gets attracted to the soul. So two events. One is an inclination of a soul's status at the time. And second thing, amount of karma particle getting attracted to the soul. So two things, these two things, exactly same thing happening again in the future. For example, let's say I was a snake, as a, I was born as a snake, and I, I, I was born with anger. And certain material karma got attracted to me. And after that life of that snake, maybe I went to hell, I went to heaven, I became human, I became plant and animals, whatever, 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 <coughs> uh, transmigratory things I went through. And finally, again, when I come with the exact same situation, which will take kind of a, uh, uh, that, that uh, you have thrown a uh, precious diamond into the ocean. And now you keep on looking, 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 and finally you get that one in your hand. So this is like a, this is like like Titanic. This is like, like like a Titanic that you know that that uh, diamond was thrown out and finally that diamond is found. But it will take extreme amount of a time, and that is called cycle of matter. So, how many cycle of matter? No, number one. How many time cycle pass by in this cycle of matter? <clears throat> Means infinite time cycle pass by. Each time cycle is twenty. Croda, Crodi, Sagropam, yes, means 20 raised to 14. That means Sagropam years. 
one sagro poem means it, 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 it's described in the literature, but in, in, for our sake, it is infinite number of years. So in, in each time cycle, that two times 24 sets of Tirthankara occurs. So for example, our time cycle, Mahavir and Rishabdev to Mahavir, 24 Tirthankara occur. This kind of sets of 24 Tirthankara, infinite amount of those Tirthankaras will occur in this cycle of matter. So again, you can imagine it's a huge, huge time. Thereafter comes, <coughs> next one comes, let me just put this one as a slideshow. <coughs> next one comes, um, uh, uh, karma, uh, Kshetra Paravartan. Kshetra Paravartan means this is a, a, a cycle of area in which if the whole universe if the time permits, I may show some slide what this universe means. But you know, if time doesn't permit, let's Im imagine that uh, this universe includes uh, hell, heaven, uh, human living area, and the space that we see above us. For example, the sun system and uh, uh, stars, and also Milky Ways. Milky Way is having an infinite amount of sun system. So all those things are included in this area. Now, it's called a cosmic area. Now, if we divide that cosmic area into minutest part that we cannot divide again further, that teeny tiny area when we take it, and let's take one area and I was born in that area. After that, that will call that number or area number one. Then I die and I go to hell, heaven, um, uh, another human, or um, um, uh, I become animal, plant, whatever, whatever. And then again, by by wandering again, when I come to the next area, number two, that's a second area. Then again, I go on wandering, and then when, when I come back to the third, that's the third. In this way, if I finish all this area in succession, then it becomes one area, one cycle of space. So this is the innumerable, not innumerable, infinite number of years passes by, infinite number of 24 sets of Tirthankar pass by, and since then, I am in existence. That's what it means to say. Then comes time of cycle, Kal Paravartan. <clears throat> Kal Paravartan means if I take the ascending time cycle and descending time cycle. Ascending means there is a progressive happiness occurring. Extreme unhappiness, milder unhappiness, some unhappiness, some happiness, milder happiness, moderate happiness, an intense happiness. So there are six parts of, a, of one ascending time cycle, and then there'll be descending time cycle, extreme happiness, medium happiness, mild happiness, and milder form of unhappiness, moderate unhappiness, and extreme unhappiness. So descending time cycle and ascending time cycle. The, in each ascending, or descending cycle that 24 sets of Tirthankara takes birth. So in we are right now passing through the descending time cycle means progressively there is unhappiness occurring, progressively misery occurs. And we are in the fifth, fifth part of the time cycle, moderate amount of, of misery and the sixth Time, so a sixth part will come, which will be intense amount of um, uh, misery will be seen. The, the human being will be kind of midgets, maybe one, maybe one and a half feet tall, and shorter, shorter lifespan. Plus, plus, right now, right now, in this time, on this universe, right now, in this world, we, we if somebody eats meat, he doesn't think of eating human being. Occasional reports are there, but in general, in the sixth time, six, six part, people will be eating people like that. So that kind of extreme unhappy situation will occur. This time cycle, this fifth part we are in, 
that lasts for 21,000 years since Mahaviswami's Nirvana and 2,500 years passed by, so 21,500 years are remaining, something like that, no, 18,000 whatever remaining. Now, sixth, time, sixth period is also going to be 21,000 and then again ascending cycle will start. So in this whole ascending, descending time, time cycle is 20 raised to 14 sagropam years. We talked about it, sagropam years means, sagropam years means that uh, if you take a four mile width, long and deep ditch and fill with the newly born ship's hair, which is extremely silky and cut into pieces that no other piece can be made and fill it up so much that king's chariot passing, it will not get depressed. It, with this ditch, every hundred years you take one hair out an amount of time it takes to empty this whole pit will be called one paleopam year. And 20 raised to 14 paleopam years, I mean, no, 10 raised to 14 paleopam years will make one sagropam year. 10 raised to 14 sagropam years makes one croda crodi sagropam years. And those kind of 20 Kroda Krodi Sagropam year means ultimately think about huge, huge, huge amount of time. Now, if this whole time that we have it, then in a blink of an eye, if I blink my eye within the narrow amount of time, which is fraction of second, the innumerable uh, time units pass by. Out of that, when I take one time unit, it's called Samai, one Samai, one time unit. And this one time unit in this 20 Kroda Krodi Sagropam years of uh, one complete time cycle, that first Samai I'm born, then I die or whatever happens, then I just keep on going wandering and then I take the birth and now second Samai I take birth then third summer and fourth summer in succession when i finish this 20 kroda krodi sagropam years then it becomes one kal paravartan it is again huge huge amount of years number of years number of time and everything in which infinite amount of 24 sets of tirthankara uh, uh, comes and then they go to nirvana so this kal paravartan and then we have Bhav Paravartan, that four realms of existence, infernal self, uh, 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 heavenly soul, humans, and uh, animals. All those, uh, subhuman I mean. So all these four realms of existence, you take the birth in succession. And once you finish that one, then it becomes one Bhav Paravartan. And now comes Bhav Paravartan, for which we have to understand this karma bondage theory first. Karma bondage, the uh, types of karma, there, there are four ways karma gets bonded to the, uh, to the soul. First one is a types of karma, means the karmas are being divided into eight different types, like for example, uh, knowledge obscuring karma, perception obscuring karma, deluding karma obstructing karma, um, uh, age determining karma, uh, uh, filling, filling karma, um, uh, uh, then uh, uh, species determining karma, and all, all this type of things, uh, and age determining karma. So there are eight types of karma are there. So what kind of karma gets attracted to me that depends on types of karma, that's number one. Quantity of karma bondage. How many karma gets bonded to myself means to the soul at a given point? That's a pradesh, prakruti, pradesh. Then comes once the karma gets stuck to me, how long they get stuck to me? That's called sthiti, means duration of karma bondage. Let's say that I become angry right now and I attracted anger producing karma with me, and they may remain with me for this life, maybe next life, and they may give me fruition in a 10 lives from now or 100 lives from now. So 
it depends on intensity means uh, i mean duration when they will come in the fruition in the future in the last phase called intensity of karma fruition when the fruition occurs how intense this karma will come out with will it give me extreme misery milder form of misery extreme happiness milder form of happiness well whatever those things are that depends on uh, that that's a karma intensity so we'll just go through some of the uh, slide over here to explain this thing a little better karma bondage so first one is called prakruti means name of the karma simply name of the karma second is amount of karma bonded to my soul that's a uh, pr uh, pradesh then time karma will stay with the soul how long it will go sthiti and fourth one is intensity of karma fruition in the future so these are four types are there now out of which first two this one and these two are having same thing that they are due to vibratory activity of the soul space point soul is made up of innumerable space points and in this innumerable space point this space point keeps on shaking keeps on having vibration and because of this vibration of this space point of the soul that is called yoga this word yoga is very misrepresented this is the absolute definition of yoga according to jainism that will when whenever we say yoga that's what we have to understand yoga means vibratory activity of the space point of the soul soul has an innumerable space point and they keep on vibrating all the time and that's the reason that one can have particular type of karma bonded and at the amount of particular karma gets bonded so this vibratory activity called yoga which is the altered activity of a important attribute in the soul called a yoga the stationary remains the, 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 the space point of the soul remaining stationary in nature that's an original attribute that's called a yoga and it's an altered modification means vibratory activity and so this vibratory activity is called yoga that will be the reason for certain types of karma and amount of karma particle coming to me now think about it amount of karma particle it comes 10 or 100 or 1000 or million it doesn't make any difference why because let's say that my shirt is clean right now it's dry and i'm going through the dust storm if you if you live in a phoenix that you will have to pass through a dust storm sometimes in a uh, summertime lots of dust gets attracted to my soul uh, my, my shirt but so what what do i do i just just take the dust out by just touching it and all the thing my dust particle will go away so amount of karma particle getting bonded doesn't mean anything it can be shaded off very easily but but now if i have let's see the next two if i infatuation also along with that this infatuation is a cause for my time duration of karma hanging around with me and intensity fruition hanging around with me at the time of a fruition so how much duration they will remain with me and what intensity they'll give me fruition those two things are de determined by the uh, infatuation state infection state means anger deceit ego greed inclusion of attachment inclusion of aversion you know, ignorance all those things are called infatuated state in the sense when i project myself in the outside world instead of looking within me that's called infatuation when i look I, I look at this phone what do i say this is my phone i like it if my grandkid takes this one i run after her and i said give me give me give me give me because you're gonna break it if she's running away with somebody else's phone i don't care about it because the child can break or doesn't break it doesn't make difference to me 
but if it is mine, then it's that's called infatuation. So anger, deceit, greed, ego, uh, in, inclusion of attachment, inclusion of aversion, in, in, ignorance, all those states are called infatuation. And because of infatuation, it, determine, it, it determines how long the karma will hang around with me and what intensity of the fruition will come to me. So having made this point clear, let's go somewhere, one more thing. There's a uh, whole thing that we are seeing in the form of graph. Now, vibratory active the soul space point called Yogasthan. Vibratory activity of the soul space point means my soul space point is in the vibratory form. In the first Gunthana, second, third, fourth, fifth, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, up to thirteen spiritual development stage, the soul's space point keeps on vibrating. And that is called Yogasthan means simply vibratory activity of the soul space point. That's it. Only Siddha Bhagwan, liberated soul, those who are totally karma free, now they have non-vibration of this space point of the soul, means there is stationary, uh, uh, they are in the stationary phase, and that is called liberated soul, that is called Siddha, that means they don't have yoga. Now, remember, what is this yoga means? Vibratory activity of the soul space point, right? So that is yoga. Now, when, when this vibratory activity of the soul space point is going on, then on the outside, <clears throat> on the material side, there is a mind, speech, and action of the body occurs. Remember, mind is also matter particles. Speech is matter particles. Physical body is matter particle. So all those three things that we see, man vachan kaya. Any, any giants will just say any, ka, ka, any kid. Yog means man vachan kaya. But that yog means they are the matter particle occurring as a result of soul's vibratory activity of the space point. So original thing occurs in the soul. When I am in, I am having vibratory activity. Then I, I attract the karma particle with me. If I am Siddha Bhagwan, if I am liberated soul, then all the space points are stationary in nature, and because they are stationary in nature, then as a result, in the matter particle, there is no mind, no speech, no bodily action, and that's why this soul is a free, without any karma. And then we call it as a Siddha Bhagwan, or we call it a liberated soul. So that's a vibratory activity. Now, this vibratory activity of the soul space point determines amount of karma and type of karma coming to the soul. That's it. Now, now second thing, souls inclusion of toxic emotions, passions, kashai, toxic emotions in relation to the karma duration means. On this side, karma is decided to hang around with my soul for, let's say, 10,000 years. Means it is going to remain dormant state for 10,000 years, and then it will come in fruition. Or it may come into existence after one, one sagra of years. So karma that I bind today, it may come in the future, uh, 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 future, uh, future uh, uh, fruition and they remain dormant and that's why lots of people we ask question yeah uh, last uh, this uh, couple of days uh, I met one guy we are talking he says how come there are people doing worst of worst possible things they may be killing people they may be having all the wrong thing they do then all those things they do how come they have the best things happen to their life? That they have a perfect body, they have no disease, and uh, they have lots of uh, 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 material wealth and everything. 
because whatever I'm doing right now, the karma comes, hangs around in dormancy and it will come in fruition many, 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 many years back, thousands and thousands and thousands of years down the road. So if, let's say in the past, I did extremely good job, I was a very pious person. And as a result, the, 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 the fruition of the karma is occurring now. And as a result, I have all the favorable surrounding, uh, favorable surrounding happens to me. Well, I have a good family, I have a good job, I have a good retirement, I have good health and everything. <clears throat> and if I'm misusing those kind of things right now, then I'm bonding new sets of karma that may come in fruition in a 10,000 years down the road, 100,000 years down the road, infinite number of years are down the road. So this duration, whatever, whatever my toxic emotions are there, Accordingly, the duration of karma can get uh, stuck to me. Highest amount of karma duration can go with the infatuated type of karma. They can go up to 70 sagropam years. 70 sagropam years. So, you know, it is a long, long time. It can remain in dormancy. Why? How? Because the soul's inclusion of toxic emotions in certain way. And that, that decides the duration of karma. Same soul's inclination of toxic emotion in relation to karma intensity of fruition means I'm, I'm becoming angry right now. And I'm in an intense form of anger. That means duration of karma bondage is decided and intensity of karma fruition is decided. And those are the things decided. So now three things happen at a given moment my space point of my soul having vibratory activity and I have toxic emotions and these two things toxic previous slide these two things toxic emotions that's an infatuation and vibratory activity of the soul yoga two things will decide types of karma coming amount of karma getting stuck to me duration of karma intensity of karma Having this point clear now, now this is called inclination of, of, of my, my inclination, soul's inclination. Let's see what's next slide shows. Uh, this is the same thing described. Okay, now uh, let, let's go to this, this same slide here. Now, this yoga stand, vibratory activity, you take point one, point one, and at that time, what is my toxic emotions in relation to duration? And what's my toxic emotions in terms of uh, uh, karma fruition? There also we take their one intensity, these also one intensity. And so once that finishes, that's number one. Then the intensity, vibratory activity, the space point remains as number, number one, but this is number two, this is number two, then this is one, three, three, like this, this vibratory activity comes to the max number. Then we start with this one and this one. So in this situation, in this way, the in the, the the cycle of in intentions they occur. This is the longest possible cycle occurs in this intention because the permutation combination of all these three things are extremely, extremely, extremely. Billions and billions and trillions and trillions of things can happen. And so this is the way we are, me and you and some of the, 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 the uh, transmigratory soul keeps on wandering in the universe all the time. The idea over here, it says that wandering occurs for time infinite. And because it's occurring from time infinite, that is become it has become my second nature. The child in the small, the small child needs to be directed that you know you should take a proper protein, proper carbohydrate, proper fat, you should do exercise and everything. And once you teach this child this thing, in beginning it's kind of a little bit difficult to do it, but thereafter it becomes second nature for this child. And then and, and the same 
kind of uh, uh, ideas will persist in the adulthood and uh, older age and things like that. So things could be difficult to start with and thereafter it becomes second nature. The first day when we go to work, what happens? It is difficult how I'm going to do work. I know all the things, but I still do interact with the people. I don't know who are those people. And it is kind of difficult. But once I know them very well, then I work kind of subcortical labor because it's my second nature it happens. So that's why because all these things are going on since time infinite in the past that it is my it has become my second nature and I have forgotten that my true nature is to be within to, to look within that part I have forgotten. So this is the thought this one we already talked about it. Now now we are going uh, this one we can uh, just uh, 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 skip this slide. So universal monarch is ruling everywhere in the sense Chakravarti is a ruler of the uh, uh, Bharat Khand for example, Bharat Chetra. Now wrong faith person rules everywhere so just like the universal monarch is ruling everywhere wrong faith person rules everywhere means wherever we go we end up meeting with this wrong faith person. That includes all of us right now. Even when one is monk, listen, simply becoming monk means nothing. Even if he's monk but has not obtained right faith, then he's also wandering in the four, four realms of existence, just like any other living being. Now, wrong faith person is lifting unnecessary burden just like bull lifting heavy weights. We carry all unnecessary burden of this karma for no reason for time infinite. That because he's carrying this heavy weight so long, so duration wise, that he thinks that, well, I, I have to withstand this suffering because I'm the living one. I'm the living being. That kind of wrong notion he has created in his mind. Wrongfully, he believes that he must do auspicious activity to, to obtain liberation. This is his biggest mistake. Remember, the word believes is very important because what he said, okay, I'll do the fasting today, not for today, I'll do for three days, not for three days, I'll do for one month, I'll do for 45 days. All kind of things, fasting and uh, I'll just do the uh, going to temple and uh, or I'll give the charity and everything, anonymous charity, all the, this kind of auspicious activity I do, it's okay to do it. But that's not my end. They are kind of means to progress further. But wrong, uh, the, the, the uh, wrong faith person believes that this is the thing is going to lead me to the liberation. That's his wrong mistake. And that's why he keeps on wandering in the four realms of existence since time infinite. And he believes that uh, first he must look at the look for the instrumental cause to perform his action. Remember, I want to speak. I said, well, when the audience comes, then I'll speak. Means somebody is there, then I will act. No. When I start acting, somebody may or may not be there. It is my independent act occur with me only. That kind of uh, understanding, I should have to have it. Um, let me do slow, close these guys. Okay, now, now with wrong faith, now there is an intense desire occurs. Because remember, I want it. I want it, I want it, an extreme desire. Desire makes one perplex. Now, let's say that I have a desire to take a new car. Which, should I, which car should I take it? Mercedes, BMW, Audi, what can I buy it? So it gives me kind of disturbance of my mind and everything. And so this desire gives the problem with perplexity with me. Fire of desire makes him burn. And this also includes auspicious inclination. So this, this, this desires, wrong faith, and auspicious inclinations are good for me, that kind of belief. And that is also wrong. It is going to 
make me burn. Now, one may physically be uh, physically healthy, but if believes that auspicious inclination will lead to the right fate, then he's suffering from internal disease of wrong faith. Again and again and again, Gurudev Kanji Swami will hit this point so strongly, so heavily, telling us that my faith, my faith, my faith needs to be changed. He doesn't say that uh, don't do good things. Obviously, it is pretty well understood. Nobody gives a message to do the bad thing. But if I'm not doing bad things, can I do good things? And so I'll serve the humanity and everything. Do it. Nothing wrong with that. You have money. You can do charity work. You're a physician. <coughs> you can go to Nepal and help those suffering, suffering of the people. Do it. But, but that is going to be helping me to obtain right faith is a wrong judgment on my part. Nobody says don't do right thing. Don't do good things. Everybody says do good to your neighbor. Do good to your uh, society. Do good to your nation. Do good to this universe. Be, be friendly with all the living beings of the universe. Do it. But, but, by doing that way, I'm on the right path. That's a wrong belief I have it. Because what will happen? Worse come to worse, when I'm doing good to the whole nation or the universe or whatever, then worst, best thing I'll get is auspicious karma getting stuck to me. Those auspicious karma will come in fruition in the future. And so this cycle will keep on repeating again and again. So those are the things that your belief, your belief is to be changed. The internal disease produces burning senses into the soul. How is it possible to become disease free with having disease? When I'm doing auspicious thing, then I get stuck with the auspicious karma and karma makes me wander in this uh, universe continuously. So how can they be helpful to me to become disease free? Not necessarily, it doesn't happen. Now, to achieve divinity, one does not need inclination of attachments help. I, I want to achieve divinity and that is within me to, to look within myself. I don't need any inclination of attachments help. Yes, it's a fact that inclination of attachment is present in the mode of transmigratory soul. In my mode, I'm the transmigratory soul. So I do, I want to stay away from negative inclinations. I want to stay away from inclination of aversion. And so I do, I, I perform inclination of attachment type of activity. But my knowledge mode simply knows the state that yes, I'm in the inclination of attachment phase my knowledge mode simply knows that one one knows that this mode belongs to him but also knows that this produces perplexity i'm doing inclination of attachment i'm doing auspicious deed and everything but i am also aware of it that this auspicious deed that i'm performing is also giving karma bondage which leads to perplexity so so that is not my true form true form will be to look within experience my true nature of the self and all this inclination slowly subside cool down disappears and i become karma free i become inclination free and that is the liberation that i'm looking for now when this gives the deduction of jainism what jain means jain means it is not a particular group of people are called jain anybody in this universe could be jain as long as one who follows the discourses of the owners and lord number one it says that one must draw his attention to the innate nature of the eternal self means omnis and lord tells me that hey you know what you want to be have peace of mind look within once you look within then your innate nature is there and you will have a super senses bliss will come from within to you if one believes that inclusive attachment is helpful 
to him, then he is not a Jain. And this state does not produce super senses bliss. It produces misery only. If I am in the influence of attachment phase, then it produces only misery and does not produce super senses bliss. Super senses bliss comes only by drawing attention to my innate nature of the eternal self. So this is what, if I am doing that, if one is doing it anywhere in the world, anywhere in the universe, then he is called quote unquote Jain. So Jain doesn't mean that one who is just going to temple and puts the yellow tikka on the forehead and everything. No. Jain means the one who has decided not to be in the inclination of attachment and aversion and to redirect his attention to the innate nature of the self. That's called true Jain. Now, <clears throat> reflective thoughts are not nature of the right faith. Now, he, he the, 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 right now, the author takes a little turn and just now he, he drives us deeper and deeper and deeper very gradually. This is the way Kun Kun Swami has done is pulling you within, pulling you deep within, so much deep within that there is no way to come out because it is just getting me to know the true self. So reflective thought means what? Reflective thought means just simply thoughts. I close my eye and I just can think, what's happening? Well, summer is coming. So day is becoming long. So did I change my timers on the, my, 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 my uh, uh, front yard and backyard lights? Oh, thinking about front yard and backyard lights, some lights are blown out. Also, I have to go and uh, buy it. When I'm going to buy it, maybe shall I buy it dozen? And all kind of thought process, one lead to other, to the third, to fourth, to fifth, and everything. And they are called reflective thoughts. <clears throat> now, even eight pillars of right faith are in the form of division, and only togetherness of these eight pillars constitute right faith. Remember, we went for about three or four sessions on eight pillars of the right faith, individual right, pillar that we talked about. Nishankit, Nikanshit, Nirvichikitsa, uh, Amur, uh, Upaguhan, uh, Sthitikaran, uh, and all those eight pillars. If we talk separately, then it's called reflective thought. But if we just consider them at one big unit of my soul, and, and I, if I see that way, then I don't have reflective thought, but I'm just going within myself. Now, now he's also throwing new thing over here. Convention point of view for karma and their effect on the soul is called agam no vyavahar. Conventional point of view for the karma and the effect on the soul. That's a one point. And the another next column says conventional point of view from purity of consciousness. So here is a karma related thing. Here is purity related thing. Purity of consciousness related thing. It's called adhyatma. This is called agam. Now, what happens in a karma related thing? There is auspicious inclination of the soul occurs. Inauspicious inclination of the soul occurs. Anger, deceit, ego, pride, inclusion of attachment, inclusion of aversion. All those things occur in this phase when I'm related everything to karma. But over here, when I'm looking for a purity perspective, then one takes refuge in the innate nature of the eternal soul substance and thereby produces right faith mode. I directed my attention over here. The attention is drawn to the karma. Outside material thing is karma. Over here, attention is drawn to the purity of the consciousness or it is the true eternal soul substance and thereby it produces right faith. Over here, it produces wrong faith. This produces right faith. It's very easy. Now, now uh, author says, it's very easy for transmigrated soul as he has done this since time infinite. Remember this Panch Paravartan, five phase of cycle we talked about, means infinite, 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 infinite amount of time passed by and I keep on drawing my attention to outside world drawing my attention to my body, drawing my attention to the karma. And because of that thing, it has become my second nature. And I just said, so what? I have to do it, right? 
somebody's pulling my leg, so I have to become angry, right? No, that's not true over here. It says, because one has not done this kind of thing in the sense he has not seen the eternal true nature of the soul substance, he has not taken refuge there, so it, it becomes, it appears to be difficult to him. But remember, remember, it, the, the, the small matter particle of a sugar, matter particle of sugar, it has no consciousness, no intelligence, but still that sugar knows that it has to give sweet taste no matter what. And here, I am with the consciousness nature, and with that consciousness nature, rather than staying in my own pure nature, I just give my to direct my attention to the outside material thing, means I just depend myself on the karma, and that's a kind of a wrong thing that I'm doing, uh, because I'm doing for time infinite, so it becomes easy. I have not seen myself, so it appears to be difficult. But Acharya Bhagwan says, look within, son, you can get the experience, it's not that difficult. Having said that, in the past I have known the nature of eternal pure soul substance, but was in the form of retention of knowledge perspective. Remember, right now we are talking about what's a soul, why I'm directing my attention to the outside world, what, what should I do, I should redirect attention to my pure nature. All these things I know from my knowledge perspective, from brain perspective, but he, I knew the, the, the fact in the reflective thought process only and never did discrimination between the reflective thought and eternal true nature of the self. And that's my problem. I, I gather the information, I gather the information, but I don't act on it. I know everything about it. But when the things come to look within, I just fall back and I say, oh, no, 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 I can't do it. You know, I'm very weak. No, that's not true. Therefore, he has never experienced innate nature of the self. He is only in reflective thought process. And the innate nature of innate nature of the experience that means it's a primary abstract comprehension means it is there is no reflective thoughts it's simply experiencing the self that i have to do it which i have not gone from this step i have not gone next particular step that's only the thing i have to do it since time infinite i kept on doing all this thing about thing but i did not do this last thing anyway um, so, in, in initial knowledge of soul comes from reading, listening about the scripture, etc., etc. This produces discriminatory knowledge which is mixed with inclination of attachment. It's not true serene knowledge. It's not quite experiencing phase of knowledge. It is just thought process I have. I have gathered all the information with me. Eternal innate nature of the soul's experiences with super... So, when I experience myself, there is no perplexity. It just simply supersenses bliss and full of consciousness that I will be experiencing. That's what is a true nature. And it's free from all the altered states, all the reflective states, and it is my primary abstract comprehension. That's what I want to achieve. So I need to do reading, listening to the scripture, and I had to, you know, I had to progress further, but I, I get just, I, I just do the reading and listening, and then I get stuck there and does not progress further. That's my weakness. How is the soul substance? The, the Acharya Bhagwan says, it's eternally and internally illuminating and expressing self. It's full of bright light of consciousness, lump of coolness of passion, free state. And it's illuminating from within and is experienced without the help of five senses and mind. Remember, one should remember that I want to experience my soul. That means I, I, I'll be beyond my senses. I'll be beyond my intellect. I'll be just engrossed within myself. It will be primary abstract 
comprehensive state which is without any reflective thoughts. For example, for example, let's say that I'm very, very tired right now. I want to go to sleep, I want to go to sleep, I want to go to sleep, I want to go. I keep on repeating, 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 lying down in the bed. That's my reflective thought. I must go to sleep. I must go to sleep. I must. I will never go to sleep if I keep on repeating that one. But I want to go to sleep. 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 And pretty soon I end up going to sleep. And these reflective thoughts gradually diminish in intensity. And then I end up going to sleep. Similarly, when I gather all the information, then I know what's my true nature. I would like to obtain my true nature. I would like to obtain my true nature. I would like to go within. I would like to go within. And one fine important moment, or one auspicious moment, I'll be entering into the experiencing phase. This is what Acharya Bhagwan tells us to do all the time. One who believes that he has unity with inclusive of attachment is known as one without spiritual knowledge because he is always having unity with the outside material thing. Eternal innate form is present but unable to experience. Remember, my eternal form is always there, always there, always there since time infinite. Only thing, I have not looked at it. I have money in the bank. I have a $10 million sitting in a bank but I am unaware of it that they are mine. They, they are on my name, it's there. I'm not aware of it. The moment I become aware of it, I just say, oh yeah, I'm the millionaire. But when I'm not looking at that fact, when I'm not aware of it, then I'm a very poor guy. I just do the menial job and everything. So I had the money, but still I did the menial job. I have my own true nature of the self, continuously staying with me since time infinite. I'm looking outside. That's why I'm suffering. He has not shown to the enlightened one. Enlightened, enlightened one has shown the pathway to experience the innate form of eternal soul suffering. Here comes the guru. Guru gives me directions because he has experienced his true self. So he says, please follow this kind of things and you will be able to obtain the true nature of the self. But I don't listen to him. I question him. I just say he's, a, he, he, he's not a, a true person. He's trying to cheat me and everything. All kind of crazy thing I think about. When I put this message into my life, then I, I then will experience the innate nature of the self. That's why there is need for guru. But <coughs> that guru could be in the form of scriptural writing, or a physical person, but when I'm ready, all those things are available in front of me and I can do it. This will be, this will be my homage to the enlightened one. In the sense, enlightened one tells me, hey, this is the way to go for it. This is the way to experience the self. If you walk on this pathway, you'll be very happy. He tells me those things. If I do it, then enlightened one will be happy. If I don't do it, he won't be unhappy. He just has kind of compassion for me and says, you know what, I hope this guy also gets an enlightenment somewhere in the future. That's all he will say with a compassion nature. So one must serve his guru. What does it mean? It means guru has shown me the pathway to experience the innate nature of the soul. He, he showed me the pathway. Guru means guru or the holy scriptures. When I do get the experience of my innate nature, then I have served my Guru, I have served my scripture, I have served my omniscient Lord. So, these are the things that I have to do. If I still believe contrary to this, Guru has shown me the pathway, scriptures have shown me the pathway, omniscient Lords have shown me the pathway, and still I am believing contrary, that means I have not served any of those entities which are great for me. The word seva comes, just, it just, just don't worry about that part. If you can just go quickly that one. You can just review yourself. Simple thing is there. I did hear the message. Now, I'm listening to the message. I'm listening to the message. I, I listening to the message means I heard it and 
implemented it and as a result i experienced my true nature that means i really 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 heard the message one must take this attention and one must take his attention away from the modal perspective and concentrate on the eternal true nature of the soul remember soul as a substance which is eternally there present and soul also has modification occurring every moment one modification occurs arises and it goes out second modification comes goes away third modification comes and goes away now these are transitory this this modal modification is transitory in nature but my eternal self is forever so if i take my attention away from this modification phase and i draw my attention to the eternal true nature of the soul then i get the experiencing of the true nature this is the central theme in samsara it will keep on coming it will keep on coming it will keep on coming till it will become second nature for me that even in the sleep somebody says who am i well i'm the eternal true nature of the soul that kind of things that uh, uh, kun kun swami is going to work on us this is the essence of all 12 canons of the original scripture all 12 canons they are huge in numbers i mean we can just go through numbers uh, exactly what, what 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 each canon means but though the original scripture and uh, there are amazing amount of uh, information is there but all this information tells you one thing and one thing and one thing only that you experience your true nature of the self if you experience that means you digested all this 12 canons and you don't need to read those things because i have not experienced so i kept on reading and listening and from that thing i built up myself and try to go within this is a message of all my enlightened true true teachers that's what they keep on telling me the true enlightened monks true enlightened teachers holy scripture and omniscient lord they all tells me the same meaning means experience yourself experience yourself go within take your attention away from the uh, modal perspective take your attention away from the uh, alien object look within that's all the central point is there due to mere ignorance living being never implemented the omniscience lord's preaching since time infinite he had unity with inclination of attachment and thereby with reflective thoughts that means self realization did not occur to him with discriminative science one experiences soul means discriminative science means i know right now my true nature is within me and everything else is separate from me so i separate myself from all the associated alien objects and go within that's called discriminative science this enlightenment this enlightenment state is difficult for him to obtain because he has never looked that side he always work as a poor guy even though he is having millions of dollar sitting on his name in the bank but he doesn't know that one i am the one full of infinite 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 amount of pure attributes within me i have never looked at it that's why i'm very very uh, uh, unhappy enlightened monks they show me the pathway they just hold my hand they say look within son you look within you will be happy it's a really most important thing that you can do in this life human being five senses with mind and i'm capable of thinking right from wrong and then i can discriminate who is the enlightened true monks or teacher for me i all these things are in my favor i put my heart into it i can obtain absolute right faith for no 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 question about it if one walks on this pathway then surely he will attain self realization now comes bavart bavart means further explanation 
means it is basically summarizes basically what we talked so far. So we can probably uh, almost uh, time. We have five minutes above. Give me five more minutes and we'll just finish this one. So we'll finish this fourth, fourth uh, stanza here. What it says in cosmic space, transmigrant soul is wandering since time infinite with his auspicious inauspicious inclination, which I'm doing it. He keeps on wandering in the five kinds of cycle of wandering for time infinite. We already talked about it. They are the names of those five, five cycles. It was a cycle of change of matter, space, time, incarnation, and thoughts. So I keep on going in this uh, transmigratory cycle. Then, since time infinite, wrong belief type of ghost has put the harness on the neck of the mundane being. He keeps on performing tedious work for mundane existence. Initially, it needs some force to put the harness, but then it becomes second nature for the bull to keep on working. Young one needs to be forced to come to business. Suppose, you know, I mean, you have a big business and your young one, young one is kind of, a, you know, not interested. So you force him to come, but ultimately it will become second nature for him to work. Same way here that uh, if uh, because it has become second nature for me to be in the inclination of attachment phase that i forgot what's my true nature Ling being is engrossed in his useless work of mundane existence he wrongly thinks he can improve everybody i cannot change anybody anywhere anytime wrong belief makes him feel to be having doership of alien objects alien objects I did something to you. You did something to me. My kids did something to me. I did something. To, no, all those uh, doership that I have for uh, alien object is wrong thing. Doership makes him having burning sensation of desire. This passion leads him to the mundane existence and wrongfully believes the treatment to be the enjoyment of worldly sensual pleasure. In fact, this desires make him burning, burning intensely. And this is the last slide coming. And last slide says, what does it say here? Uh, let, let me take this thing. Oh, okay. Transmigrant soul has never heard the story of the eternal true nature. And uh, mm, this, self, this self is entirely separate from all living belonging of the universe. He did not realize the true nature of the self. He did not follow the advice given by enlightened monks. Guru told him to know, get intimacy, and to experience the innate form. The Guru doesn't want anything. He doesn't need any money. He doesn't need to for me to provide him comfort and everything. He simply says that you, as a mundane soul, know, get intimacy to the soul, and experience the innate form. That's all his wish. As he has not experienced the innate nature of self, as he has not, he has not heard the story of the eternal self. I have not heard the story of eternal self because I have not experienced myself within. Therefore, it's difficult for him to attain this inter, inter, eternal innate state. So why it's difficult for me? Because I, for time infinite, I have kept my attention to outside world. So those are the things that this Tanja says to us. And we will just basically, overall, if we just look at it, that it says by saying those five phases of uh, hanging around the transmigration, that I'm hanging around since time infinite. And because of that thing, I, it becomes second nature for me to do increase of attachment and aversion. That means I forgot my true nature. Enlightened monks tells me, look within, look within, and we'll, you'll get uh, happiness. That's the crux of this fourth stanza. We will just, uh, uh, you know, uh, we, have, uh, we can just go through question answers. If, the, if anybody has any questions, we can just entertain those questions. Let me put everything on right now. Uncle, I have a question. Yeah. So I want to take an example so that I, I want to see if I understand the concept correctly. Yes. Let's say that uh, in my daily life, I've done something to really upset Preeti, and Preeti is angry with me. Yeah. So in that, in my thought process, in my reflective thought, I say to myself, 
I'm not going to respond in anger. My true nature is the knower. Because I'm the knower, then I will be at peace just being that knower. But my issue is this. I'm still in my reflective thought as I'm saying these things in my own mind. I am not in that experiential state yet, right? Yes. So how, is it just because this is such a routine that we've gotten used to that it's not in the experiential phase, but I do continue to need to keep saying that to myself? Is yeah. that yeah. the way it works? We, what it is, this is, we are climbing the ladder. Remember, we are climbing the spiritual ladder. And on that spiritual ladder, First, I was doing wrong thing, wrong thing, wrong thing, all the time continuously. Now, I just stop for a while and I said, you know what? This is not my true nature. My true nature has to be at least not to do wrong. Not to do wrong means I'll try to do something positive for the humanity at large. Okay, you do that, but it should be become second nature for you. Well, you know, I'm, I'm doing humanity work and I'm the newspaper and a TV station and radio and everything and the whole world knows me that I'm greatest of the... No, that kind of feeling, I should not have it. I should do the, uh, the auspicious deeds by second nature. For example, I woke up in the morning. I, did the tooth, I, I went to the bathroom. I did toothbrush. I took a shower. I did my daily prayer and everything. I took my breakfast. I went to work. All these things are happening reflexly. Nobody has to remind me. I don't have to say, oh, do I have to go to the bathroom now? Oh, is it time for my breakfast? No. It becomes so reflexly, you just do the subconscious level. Same thing. When I do the auspicious activities like this, it should go kind of subconscious level. Yeah, it is happening. It's happening. I'm not performing. Now, when you are when, when you do this, your anger, deceit, ego, greed kind of becomes less and less and less intense. And when they are less intense, now you are able to grab your knowledge a lot faster and a lot deeper. Now, again, it's a reflective thought. Now I, now I understand the reality and my nature of the soul. Then I should say, I want to be myself only. I want to be myself only. And that reflection I keep on doing, that kind of deep reflection I keep on doing, and my thought process becomes calmer, cooler, and slower, and ultimately, I go for the experiencing phase. So what you are telling, that uh, I'm in reflective thought with a positive thinking, that's a, that's a possible step towards the uh, ultimate liberation. But until Let's say you left uh, 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 little, uh, your home. You're coming to my home. When you left, when you went to airport, then you just said, hey, I'm in Phoenix. But you're not in Phoenix. Okay, you landed in Phoenix. You're still not at my home. You came, you drove, you came to my home, you pressed the bell. Now you put foot in my house. And that is the really at the time, you really, really all the previous activities were leading to come to my home. Anyway, you can change your attitude in between and you are not coming to my home. You started there, but your, your flight got delayed, flight got diverted, and you end up going to Florida instead of coming to Arizona. So those are the things that we have to keep in mind. These are the steps will come, but I don't want to hang around with those steps. I want to keep going further, you know. That's a, that's a very good thought that you have, it. That that's very good, you know. Okay, any more questions? Okay, if not, then we can stop over here and uh, you do, we, do the, we do the closing. Sarva Mangala Mangalyam Sarva Kalyana Karakam Pradhanam Sarva Dharmanam Jainam Jaitu Sasanam Jainam Jaitu Sasanam Jinwani Kedan Se Suje Lokalo so vani mastaka namo sada deta hodra. Now ba namo ka mantra.
जय जनरे एवरीबॉडी जय जनेंद्र जय जनेंद्र जय जनेंद्र बेटा वी विल मीट नेक्स्ट वीक ओके